Welcome everybody, my name is François Letat and this is my channel JDRD30, a channel about tabletop role-playing games. Today, this will be a review of Wild Blades, the Easy Play Fantasy Fusion Rules by Sean Patrick Fannon for Obsidian Studios. Yes, this is a fantasy role-playing game, no settings tied to it, just the game mechanic. And it runs under the Fusion uh, game system. So, what is Fusion? tell you about it, yeah, Fusion is the combination of the interlock system uh, used in Cyberpunk and the Hero game system. Both uh, publishers joined their force together to create Fusion in the 90s. Lots of good role-playing games were published with that game system. Even I think even today there are some uh, current games that are using the Fusion game system. Uh, Wild Blades was published in 1999. This is a rules light version of the Fusion game system, but uh, yeah, it's fully compatible. This is a very interesting game. I had the chance to try it. I was very pleased with what I've tried. So yeah, I will flip through the book and comment what's in there, give you my thoughts about it. By the way, this is a free role-playing game. The link will be below if you want to get it. And I will, see, I will also uh, give you the link of the f generic Fusion game system if you want to take a look at it. So let's begin. Uh, yeah, creating a character. Uh, this is a point by system. Okay, uh, so there are different number of points depending on the level of gaming you want. You know, on the power level you want to run the game. Uh, the standard game it will be 18 primary points and 20 option points. Epic game, it's more. You know, 24 primary points, 30 option points, or you can even go with a more grittier type of campaign, you know, 12 primary points and 10 option points. And yeah, there are some limits on how many points you can put on the different stuff. Um, yeah, like in the standard game, you can you can put more eight than 8 primary points into uh, any characteristic and you can put any more than 4 option points into one skill set. Okay, so it's all written in there, very easy to understand. The basic characteristics, there are only four of them. Physical, mental, combat, and movement. Combat was a little confusing to me at first because it's not only used for combat. This is, in fact, dexterity. Okay, It could have been called simply dexterity. So, yeah, it's, it's used for many other things. You know, you can have a high combat score, but not necessarily be someone who is a fighter. You can be some sort of an acrobat and have a high combat score. So, yeah, only four characteristics that you put points in. From those characteristics are de derived, you know, derived stats, which are the hit points. Uh, there are, there's an easy formula to follow here. Uh, defense. Defense, to let you know, is some kind of your natural armor which will soak out uh, bashing damage because there are two types of damage that you can receive. You know, the bashing attacks and the slashing attacks. And bashing attacks can be soaked out with your defense score. Though. So this is some sort of armor. You have a run characteristic, r swim and leap, which is uh, a number of moves that you can do. It's the distance that it will be calculated here. And then come the real fantasy stuff, uh, which are the races. Lots of races that can be bought with uh, option points. Uh, yeah, they are, they are common classics here. Well, cat folk, okay, dwarves, elves, goblins, humans. Well, humans doesn't cost uh, anything to take. Uh, yeah, it's a classic. Humans don't have anything very special, but yeah, you have all the points. Uh, you have all the points you want to do whatever you want after that with it. Lizard folk, you can play ogres, orcs, winged folk. So yeah, you can buy those kits and already write on your sheet what you need to play them with all the special abilities they have. After that, with option points, you can buy uh, some talents, which can which can be, uh, you know, it can be compared with feats in the D20 system or adv advantages in GURPS. Okay, there's a quite a well a good list of it 
okay, uh, which can make your character quite unique. Uh, well, of course, maybe there's a, there are ways to create some of them. Uh, you know, most of these talents are bought with uh, option points. Uh, there's one though, which call is called Aura Sight, which is bought with primary points. It's very important. That's the talent you need if you want to cast spells. So yeah, it's very important to uh, take that into account. So the different talent will give you some edge or, or bonuses on different type of roles. Then you have the skill sets. This is, you know, a very broad skill list. And uh, yeah, well, the skills covers lots of stuff. You know, if we take athletics, yeah, you can do climbing, uh, horse riding, sailing, uh, can do some feats of strength with it. You know, if you take put points in athletics, you can do all those stuff. Uh, so yeah, this is a quite sufficient list. You know, from the games I had, you know, I never had a moment where I was searching for, oh, what skill can be taken? You know, I was always able to choose something into that. Uh, there are skills for casting spells like mage to scale to to cast wizardry and uh, druid because there are druids into that book. You want to do a magic user? Well, you have to keep some primary points because uh, you have to, to take them to buy spells uh, and you have to take the aura side talent as I said earlier. So, there are two types of magic that are suggested in this book. Mage, you know, the being a magic user or wizard, and druid. Uh, the spells, you know, are bought with primary points. You can put more points into that if you want a, a, a stronger or a, a power, more powerful full version of the spell. Uh, well, you have any kind of spells, you know... Uh, you have the classic bolts that you can throw at enemies or thing to detect evil illusions, invisibility, okay? It's not a very long list of spells, but I think uh, you can work out easily your own spell list from that because it's very easy to uh, to handle, okay? Uh, I think, it, I, I think I, from one NPC I have created a spell and it was quite... Mechanic Elite was uh, the same as what was there, you know, it was quite equal, okay, it was a, the, the spell made sense into the game system, that's what I wanted to say. So yeah, so you have all the mage spell, druids, yeah, there's no clerics of some sorts, you know, the, the closest you have are the druids, um, yeah, and M2 has to, uh, you know, the, the druids has to put primary points into spells, for them to, to have them and you can have more powerful version of spells to yeah the, the, the possibility is there you just put the points and it works uh, yeah the healer I think the healer is the is the druid just want to make sure yeah bestow life the life force that is how it's called so yeah you want to make a cleric of some sort you can base yourself on the druid to make it uh, because they call it druids, but I think uh, it will be could be easily uh, transferable to uh, a cleric type of character. So this this is for the spells, and you have a weapon list. Very interestingly, uh, weapons, in my opinion, are well made. Okay, you have a basic damage, but you have a minimum strength to wield the weapon. But if you have more strength than uh, and the minimum strength you have bonus dices to do damage and I can tell you you know with combat and I will talk about it in a couple of pages but um, combat is very deadly in that you know you drop your hit points very fast all weapons are have their own special things well most of them uh, some uh, special trick you can do or some special uh, needs to, to, to use them properly and uh, yeah, you have a bonus or minuses with your action, you know, when you roll the dice, depending on, on the weapon type. Yeah, you have all sorts of ranged weapons. You know, it's self-sufficient that way. And a small uh, place for armor. So yeah, if you want to soak off um, slashing damage, you need an armor. 
okay you really need an armor because your defense will only uh, get away the uh, bashing damage if your armor is more powerful than your uh, natural defense well the armor will soak bashing damage and slashing damage from from the same number but if your armor is less than your defense well you have to be careful on what type of damage you receive and the shields which will uh, give you a uh, an edge with uh, soaking off well it it adds oh no in fact it adds to your defense role yeah i just want don't want to be confused here it adds to your defense role the game system itself very easy 3d6 plus your action value what is the action value is the primary characteristic you will use to do that skill and the broad skill you want to add with it uh, so you can choose any characteristic and any set of skills if you have a talent that may add to it you simply add it then you have to beat the target number the standard is 14 there is a difficulty chart here you know which climbs up to night impossible if you reach 38 you made the night impossible Knight and I G H. I don't know if I say it correctly, but yeah. So it's very easy to handle. Yeah, very very easy. You can do opposed roles as usual. You know, both uh, both uh, person involved in the action roll against each other. The highest roll wins. Something very easy. Uh, the time. In fusion, uh, our time is handled is very precise. Uh, there are turns, there are rounds, which are the the, the time uh, fragment that I have used the most in the game since it's used in combat. One round is three seconds, but one turn is twelve seconds. It's very important to understand because it, it makes the combat into the get that game system uh, quite uh, special. Uh, you roll for initiative. Uh, which is your raw combat characteristic, you know, from the highest to the lowest initiative. The initiative you have rolled is good for a whole turn. So, yeah, for four rounds, you have the same initiative, which makes it uh, quite uh, special, in my opinion. You have basic action that you can do, attack, block, dodge, draw weapon, get up, grab, okay, all detailed here with how to handle them in the game some advanced actions that we had a little you know more precise things to the game usually if you let's say you decide to attack first you attack someone you add the highest initiative you roll your attack well if your uh, opponent decides to block that's what he will do you know he will roll the dice see if he succeeds in that and if he blocks, well, he can do another action. That's what he did in the round. So, yeah, so for four rounds, if you continue to attack this person, uh, you, you will always attack and he will always block if he wants to. Yeah, you will always add the advantage against him. But in the next, when the turn will be over, you will roll the initiative again and it can, you know, it can turn away. It can, it can be the opposite and suddenly your opponent can take advantage and then you will be the one who blocks you can do a move you know a standard move and an attack so yeah if you using a grid or miniatures you can you know simulate the movement on the map the person going against each other yeah that's something i like you know that that's something that was uh, quite interesting in the game so attacking how does it work so it, it's like the basic mechanic your action value which is 3d6 plus your combat and your relevant weapon skill or anything you want to fight with and you compare it to the defense value of your target so the, what is the defense value that is something that I had to figure out the first game I ran I think I got it wrong the second game it was alright because I discovered in the text how it works but this is your combat with any relevant melee score of the weapon you're handling this is your defense value and you add 10 to it well there are some options i think in the generic fusion about rolling the dice but in wild blades it's just simply 10 plus your combat score and your melee score 
and yeah, that is the target number of your defense. Uh, unless he wants to block, you know. So blocking, uh, yeah, you have to roll your end-to-end -end attack, and maybe you will get better than that. Yeah, range with the penalties. Okay, slashing and bashing damage. I think I talk about it uh, with uh, about the armor, how to soak them out. Uh, yeah, so there are diff different, uh, you know, uh, different level on how hurt you are. You are dazed when you have lost more than half your total hits. So dazed means that you have a min minus five penalty on your defense value. And uh, yeah, at zero you are simply knocked out. So yeah, you, you are prone, you can't do anything, and at minus ten hit points you are dead. Quite classic. Then you, there's a part in the book, there's some sort of a monster uh, bestiary. All sorts of stuff you can fight. Animals, more uh, fantastical monsters, uh, some examples here, lots of them. And some uh, people, you know, the typical guard, togs, and you know, different levels of what you can fight undead. Yeah. You have enough stuff to make out your own characters. And then we come to the appendix. This is simply that. Uh, yeah, the, in the appendix, there's glossary. Yeah, you need that. Uh, the strength chart of breaking things. If you want to hit something, you know, there's a an idea on how it works. Uh, limits on magic. Yeah, because in the magic se section, if you read it the way it is, there's no limits. You can cast spells, you know, at will with no uh, consequences. Uh, in my, you know, one shot, I've used the easy way method that is uh, suggested in the appendix about limits on magic. There are two ways that they suggest here, but it's so easy to understand that you can even come up with your own way to do it. And the famous rules of X, which is something special with fusion, I didn't really use that, but I think uh, on the long term it can be something... Uh, that can be taken into account it's I would translate that as the challenge rating you know from uh, from the d20 system a, a way to, 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 to deal with that and experience improving characters if you want to go on the long term with that this is Wild Blades what I think about it I really enjoy the system I really like the flexibility and how easy it is it would need some works you know the uh, there's lots of good works done, but what is comfortable with that game is to know that it's fully compat compatible with any Fusion products. So if someone who really wants to dig Fusion and start with Wild Blades may get himself any Fusion products and, you know, incorporate some of the stuff that he find, can find elsewhere and it will be, you know, it won't, it won't break the game. I think it will keep itself as what you expect from it. Um, you know, I've used the lock rule from the generic fusion you know, book, and he, you know, it was, a, it was, a, it fit quite well into that game system. So, yeah, um, there's no setting. If you like to have something with a setting, well, you have to put your setting. Uh, some modifications may have to be put, you know, from for the races if you want, or how magic works. Since, yeah, the, the author of this book uh, suggested magic in one way. Probably he was, uh, he was with his own fantasy world where druids and mages were the norm. Maybe, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, maybe something else can be brought to it. Some works has to be done on the spell list. But for people who enjoy working a game that way, you know, taking it and trying some stuff and adding some you no know, the, the basic mechanic is very easy to understand very easy to handle i didn't have any real problems in running it frankly i was quite surprised i was uh, i you know at first i thought that it would be a very complicated game and no not at all this is more easy than i thought i think it's just a number of options that mm, make it look difficult a little like GURPS, you know, basically GURPS is easy, but, you know, if you want to put lots of options, that's up to you, you know, you don't need to do that. 
But yeah, that is Wild Blades. You know, I could run a campaign with that. You know, I would be happy to run it. So I can recommend that to you. And after all, this is a free game. So get yourself a copy. You know, the link is below. So yeah, it was a pleasure to do that review, that review to you. So yeah, feel free to leave comments, ask questions. I will be happy to respond to you. My name is François Letard for JDRD30, and up to next time, I hope you have as much fun in your life as in your games. Goodbye.